Today on CityCast Philly, the Committee of 70, a nonpartisan nonprofit group, has released the first independent poll in Philly's 2023 mayor's race. They worked in a partnership with several different groups, including Fair Vote, the Urban Affairs Coalition, the Philadelphia Citizen, and the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia. The poll surveyed 1,500 likely voters. With less than a month until Election Day, who's in the lead to be the city's next mayor? It's Monday, May 1st. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Lauren Christella, your interim president and chief operating officer of the Committee of 70. Lauren, the race to be Philly's next mayor has been pretty crowded. Who did your poll find is leading the race right now? How close is it? So our poll found that it's a statistical dead heat. We're tied. Uh, The top four candidates, Rebecca Reinhart, Sherelle Parker, Helen Gim, and Alan Dom, are all within the credibility interval. It's you know so, sort of like margin of error, but not. Okay. Um, and that's there's a four point gap between them, and the the credibility in, interval is three point eight. Is a race this close normal for Philadelphia mayoral primaries? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, so it's it's something we haven't seen in a while. It's not totally unusual given that our municipal primaries tend to have much lower turnout than, say, a presidential year election. So we're really looking at a race that could be decided with as little as two or three thousand votes. So what what was interesting to me that I found is that there's still like there's a total of nine Democrats seeking the nomination. So how did the other candidates favor in this poll? So Jeff Brown came in just outside of of that top group with 11 percent. And then the rest of the candidates were really in the one and two percent range, really not viable in this in this poll. And there's still voters who are undecided, about 20 percent, right? The poll showed that 20 percent of voters are undecided when we push them to give us an answer. About 5 percent chose, but 15 percent re- remained undecided. They they decided not to cast a vote. So I think what that says is really this is anybody's race. Um, and each of the, the candidates really performs differently with different types of voting blocks across the city. So Rebecca Reinhart did really well with white voters and with men. She also captured uh, most of Center City and higher income earners, right? That was Rebecca's kind of block there. Sherelle Parker did extremely well with Black and Latino voters. She had more than two times any other candidate in those demographics. Um, Helen Gim also had had a strong showing with white voters and then also really dominated in the voters that identified as very liberal and crucially, people who have already cast their ballot via mail-in ballot. Um, Alan Dom and Jeff Brown are doing really well with people who identify as more conservative or moderate. And it's interesting, the ranked choice voting shows basically where those votes go. And I think that's really where what Jeff Brown, Alan Dom's votes, by and large, went to Rebecca Reinhart and a little bit to Helen Gim. So it will really come down to turnout, right? Who can motivate people that they are supporting them to come out to the polls on Election Day, May 16th. Right. And speaking of Election Day, um, it's right around the corner. Could this ranking change between now and then? It absolutely will. Any poll, every poll is just a snapshot of a moment in time. Right. So this poll tells us what likely voters in the Philadelphia Democratic primary thought between April 21st and April 25th. That could change today. That could certainly change next week. And I guess we'll know for sure on May 16th with the official (laughs) tallying of, of the votes. Lauren, I'm also curious, why do a poll now? You know, how useful is this for voters? So we hope that this poll is just one more piece of information voters can use when making a decision about how to cast their vote, right? They should be listening to all of the different forums that are taking place, read the candidate statements, and certainly use Committee of 70's Interactive Voter Guide at 70.org. But this poll, I think all public polling is important just to to get a temperature and, and see where other people are and where they're thinking and who has what type of support. It's it's an important public service. And it's been disappointing that there haven't been more independent polls in this race. 
given that the candidates have been reluctant to release their polls. Interesting. Let's talk actually about the design of your poll. Some political polls ask voters for one name, but this poll gave the option for voters to rank their choices for mayor. Tell me a little bit about that. The ranked choice voting simulation is really why the Committee of 70 chose to partner on this poll. We think it's an important conversation to start, and this is a very big way to start that conversation. But the poll, it was very simple. We asked people uh, to, to give us their top choice, right? That, and that's like the basic horse race poll. But then we also asked them to, to rank their first choice, their second choice, all the way to fifth choice. And then from there, we ran the ranked choice voting simulation, this instant runoff type of election, to, just to see if the results would be different. And what became evident is that Rebecca Reinhardt was the first to pass that 50% mark. Mm -hmm. Ranked choice voting allows an elected official to come in with more of a mandate, right? You don't win until you hit over 50% of the vote. Whereas we could see a a mayor in in the election that we run, that we've always run, you could see a a mayor win with just over 20% of the vote, right? And you mean a single choice? In the single choice, yeah, election that we will all be voting in Mm -hmm. on May 16th. So it really does show where there's consensus, where if people are torn, which clearly they are in this election with 20 percent still undecided, this allows them to to show where their other preferences are and really where, you know, the people that they don't want to see win as well. Got it. Okay, Lauren, in this city, Democrats outnumber Republicans by a lot. And historically, whoever wins the Democratic primary becomes mayor. Can you also explain why not every voter is actually going to choose one of these candidates on May 16th? Absolutely. So in Pennsylvania, we have closed primaries. That means that only voters registered as Democrats or Republicans, the two major parties, can cast a vote for the candidates on Election Day. If you are registered independent or with a third party, you will only be able to vote on the ballot questions, which are important still, but I think most people do want to say in all the different candidates. So there's also a fight to end closed primaries in Pennsylvania. We're one of the few remaining states that have this system. And Committee of 70 is leading a coalition of partners in the Ballot PA initiative. So if that's something you care deeply about, definitely check out Ballot PA. Uh, Also, May 1st, Monday, May 1st, is the deadline to register to vote and also to change your registration or pick a party. So if you want to vote on candidates, that's your deadline to do so. So going back to the design of the poll, Lauren, what are some of the limitations to this type of rank choice polling? The only limitations are that One, you would have to explain what ranked choice voting is. Most people don't know what it means to rank their votes. So there's a little bit of explanation required. But what our poll showed was that even though more than half of people weren't familiar with ranked choice voting, after they did the simulation, they voted that way, 80 percent said it was very easy and over 50 percent said they would like to see this come to Philadelphia. And that's just with one simulation. What are the limitations to a single independent poll, do you think? The limitations to only having one independent poll is that, again, it's just a snapshot of a moment in time. We're not tracking trends. We're not seeing who's rising, who's falling, uh, shifting public opinion, the impact of different news stories on on the outcomes of polls. Uh, we really should have more than one poll. And I would I would implore other news outlets and academia to put another poll in the field. We do have time to pull that off. And then I would also welcome their partnership in future elections so that we can make sure that there's ample public polling for for these types of elections. How could candidates use this information in the final weeks before the primary? So my guess is that candidates might use it to say that they're still contenders, right? If there's any kind of um, discussion about the likelihood that they'll make it. So they'll probably use it in fundraising emails. You might see it <laughs> pop up all over social media, but hopefully they'll use it to make a compelling case that they're they're still in the race and then really turn it back to the issues, right? It's not about the poll and, and where they rank, but it's about finding voters that identify with their vision for the city and that share their values. And that's really what it comes down to. Lauren, what do you hope voters take away from this poll How should we think about the results? Really, the headline is just how close it is and and that every single vote will matter. 
so so engage your neighbors, talk to the, you know, the parents of your kids, friends, you know, whatever it's going to take to really get the vote out. Because what we're seeing right now is that it's anybody's race and really it will all be decided on who can motivate the highest turnout. Lauren Grisella, Interim President and Chief Operating Officer for the Committee of 70. Thanks for breaking this all down and for joining me on CityCast Philly. Thank you so much for having me. This is terrific. We'll have a link to the Committee of 70's public poll in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. Community activists delivered a petition with more than 15,000 signatures to City Hall last week, opposing the proposed 76ers arena near Chinatown. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, they urged city council members to take a formal stance against the project. Now, most city council members say they're talking to both sides and are waiting for more information before making a decision. Only city council members Kendra Brooks and Jim Harity formally oppose their arena. And starting today, the Philadelphia Parking Authority will be ticketing drivers parked in bike lanes. Philadelphia Voice reports that this is part of an effort to make streets safer for cyclists. PPA officers will patrol on bikes in Center City, University City, and South Philly. It's time for the tip of the day, where we share a life hack for living in Philly. Today is the last day to register before the primary, and the deadline to apply for a mail-in or civilian absentee ballot is May 9th. We'll have a link to the information on how to register and how to vote by mail in our show notes. If you have a tip of the day, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.